Death is certain. No matter what you decide to do in life, no matter what your goals and dreams are, you will someday die. Yet despite this unavoidable phenomenon, we know very little about it. Some folks believe in a life after death, some don't, which makes it even more compelling. The one thing associated most with death is skeletons, a depiction of ourselves after we die, or me whenever I try to study. Since the skeletons are the literal picture of death, I figured, why not make a top 10 skeletons in video gaming? It fits the theme of October down to the bone. Let me rattle your bones a little bit with the top 10 skeletons in gaming. We'll start with one of my favorite titles on the Sega Genesis, Golden Axe. Since the game is loaded with skeletons, which skeleton is the best you may ask? This one? Or this one? Looks nothing like the previous skeleton I just showed you, a completely different skeleton. There's just so many different skeletons to choose from, right? Well, no one of these tiny bitches are worthy. Game over! Tenth spot goes to, maybe surprisingly, the character select screen skeleton. Now you may think I'm tripping on acid. I can't say no, but hear me out. The unnamed, unfortunately, select screen skeleton is iconic for the series. You start the game, it's greeted with the title screen, push the start button and bam, right in your face is this giant, semi-cracked, bone boss. The image will forever be imprinted in your mind. Whenever you think Golden Axe, you'll think about this Gacha Dokuru. If you're unlucky, like me, he'll also appear in some very realistic nightmares, which makes him even more terrifying. That's a hell of a way to start off your journey, and this top 10 list. We've set the ambience with the select screen skeleton, a meritorious 10th spot. Let's continue. Speaking of Gacha Dokuru, about two years ago I played, and platinum Neo. It was a long journey filled with challenges, death and hours upon hours upon hours of grinding. During these hours I came across one of my few real phobias, a giant skeleton boss called Gacha Dokuru. This colossal yokai is based on Japanese mythology where it's said that the Gacha Dokuro is created by the bones of soldiers who died of starvation or in battle without being buried. That sounds pretty damn harsh. This battle is not only annoying and tough, but the fact that you're facing this menacing nightmare is almost a battle within itself. Enormous, unreal entities have always frightened me, and it doesn't help that the entity in question is a skeleton. The only thing missing to kill me mentally is a slight fog so you only see the shade or outline of the giant. Please don't. I'll never be able to forget this monster, but it's not for the lack of trying. The Gashi Dokuro from Neo claims the number 9th spot on this list. It's not only the form that makes a skeleton scary. Sometimes it's the malformation, monstrous depiction, and sometimes, as in this case, it's the personality and horrifying shriek that hammers home the dread of a skeleton. Since the inception of Spinal's introduction in Killer Instinct, he's been an icon both for horror, but also for his chilling laughter. Despite his simple design, it's the character behind the bones that sticks with you. The idea of a dead pirate being brought back to life was an original one when Spinal was created, unlike now. I haven't got much else to say really. He's extremely fun to play as, and the character itself is quite interesting. And as I said in my last top list, his theme, both in the original game and the 2011 version, is great. Spinal is number 8.
I'll take any chance I can to mention and talk about Heroes of Might and Magic 3. It's quite possibly my number one favorite game ever created. Maybe even beating Bloodborne, that's how good it is. Back in the day my friends and I had no clue how to play the game, but yet we always had fun when we did. The best base was, of course, Rampart, and I'd always pick that one. Nowadays my tastes have changed and my new go-to base is the Necropolis. I don't really know what it says about me, but there you go. Since Necropolis is filled with skeletons, we have a long list of possible candidates. The Wraiths are probably my least favorite units. The Liches are badass and I like to build them ASAP. Bone Dragons have massive power and the ability to age enemies straight into another life, but that's not quite enough. The number 7 spot goes to the Skeleton Warriors. Despite them being level 1 units and the most expendable of the bunch, their strength lies in numbers. Long, outdrawn games on XL maps lets you amass an army of these guys, and if you come in their way, good luck. Necropolis isn't even half balanced. I love it. Also, Sundra is the best unit in the game. There's only one skeleton worthy enough to be on this list from Mortal Kombat. And he claims the very fitting 6th spot, the heated avenger known as Scorpion. While not entirely a skeleton, he still fills the quota to be on this list. A skeletal warrior of some kind. Only difference is that in Scorpion's case, he's also on fire. I wouldn't want to fight Scorpion. Being burnt to a crisp doesn't look like the most comfortable death especially if done by a flaming skeleton man. No thank you. There is not much else to say, because I feel like Scorpion is just a clear entry on this list, without the need to justify having him on here all that much. Anyone who followed or been a fan of Mortal Kombat knows how iconic he is, both as a yellow, spear-throwing ninja, but mostly as a fiery revenant of death. Scorpion is once again number 6. Ninja Gaiden is one of those underrated semi-hidden gems that many give up on after its steep difficulty curve at the start of the game. During chapter 6, called the Monastery, you venture into a, you guessed it, Monastery. There you find a hidden path under the altar leading to an ancient tomb and ritual room. Yeah, you can hear where this is going. The hidden underground keeps you on edge with its atmosphere and tense encounters, especially that horrifying background music. All this until you accidentally happen to awaken the number 5 spot on this list, an ancient bone dragon. Well shit, nothing left to do but fight it I guess. Why the bone dragon deserves the 5th spot is because of two reasons mostly. The design and the pressure induced when you fight him. His skeleton still has part of flesh on them and the threat levels in this confined area makes the bone dragon a deadly enemy. And it's well worth the number 5 spot on this top list. Nothing in the gaming world is more synonymous with death than the now legendary game known as Dark Souls. So it's only logical that the skeleton from the game appears on this list. The only question remains, which one? Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush. And your time is more valuable than me babbling on like I do right now. Despite how much I hate these fuckers, the number The number 4 spot goes to one of the four original lords, Grave Lord Nito. Being among those who found the Lord Souls, Nito also helped take down the ancient dragons, and since then he's been acting as death within the Dark Souls universe. A player may become a Grave Lord servant to serve Nito and spread death throughout Lordran. But whatever they do, 
In time, they will have to come face to face with Nito and challenge him in a battle to the death. What a fitting conclusion to his saga. During the mid-90s, LucasArts created many point-and-click adventures that are considered to be pioneers in their genre. Maniac Mansion, Loom and Monkey Island is among the most notorious games developed by LucasArts. But they also made another, Juego Particular, a game that has a skeletal, calaca-like main character, Manuel Manny Calavera, our number 3 spot on this list. In this point-and-click adventure, we follow the main lead Manny, a Grim Reaper by trade, or more accurately, a travel agent of souls through the different layers of the underworld, in order to solve a case revolving the journey of the souls to their eternal rest. That's the gist of the story. Sporting a dry and sarcastic sense of humor, Manny Calavera never fails to crack me up. Get it? Cause b bones, they um, they crack when they bre they break. Manuel is not only a great lead in this classic game, but the game itself is a magnificent commentary on both death, but also its intricacies and mystery. This Mexican-American skeleton boy easily takes home the third spot on this list. You know why I'm so happy right now? Because as of right now, the remake of Medieval is on its way to be released. Perfectly in time for Halloween, available for purchase on the PS4. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I feel sorry for you, for missing a true gem in the PSX library. Medieval is a hack and slash action game, with the number 2 spot on this list in the lead role, Sir Daniel Fortescue. The most adequate skeleton knight you've never heard about, since he was the very first to die in a war back in the day. Talk about bad luck. However, he's rumored to still be the hero of Galamir, as the one who cut down every foe in his path, including the evil wizard Sharok. But it's all fabricated. You are resurrected by accident, and now you get your chance to actually take down Sharok, to become the hero of Galamir as you were originally supposed to be. So Daniel achieves the second spot because he's such a magnificent character in an even more magnificent game. Filled with brilliant humor and a perfect Halloween theme throughout the entire game. Such a game wouldn't exist today, but here we are, getting the remaster in time for Halloween. What an unforgettable skeleton Sir Daniel Fortescue is. As always, before the number of Uno, I have some honorable mentions I'd like to mention. Skeletons have been around since the very early days of pretty much all media, even scriptures. So chances are I missed some skeletons you may like more than me, or in general know about. I don't really have much else to say, so here's the honorable mentions.
ghosts will be a big hit at this year's Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. Since death has always gone hand in hand with skeletons, isn't it fitting to have just that as the number one spot? In this case, that's what tops the list. Death from the Castlevania series has many forms and reappears in almost every entry, but in the end, the number one spot belongs to either the depiction from Symphony of the Night, one of the best Castlevania games ever created, or the very first death, probably the hardest challenge from the first game. Since I am extremely biased even through this list, big surprise I know, the ultimate champion when it comes to being a gaming skeleton is Death from the first Castlevania. Within the borders of the game, he's an extremely tough boss and the section before his fight doesn't make it any easier. In fact, it's the hardest part in the entire game. And guess what happens if you lose all your lives? Back to the beginning of the stage. Castlevania was ruthless back in the day, and I love it. There hasn't been a better or more famous depiction of a skeleton in any game since for me. And that's why death deserves the number one spot. So much thanks I'll give to you for watching this not scary, but thematically fitting top 10 list. Words aren't enough to describe how much you watching means to me, so I'll just say thank you for now. If you enjoy the content, you know what to do. Hope you have a continued great spooktober and there is more to come.